place in the Premier League as a prize for the winners of today's First Division playoff final at Wembley, as Leicester and Swindon battle for the final promotion place. Leicester polished off Portsmouth in the semi-final, despite finishing 12 points behind him at the end of the regular season. Brian Little's men were playoff losers last year. And Glad Hoddle's Swindon side knocked Tranmere Rovers out of the equation. The Robins were playoff winners three years ago, but were denied promotion because of financial irregularities. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Wembley. Jimmy Greaves is with me, and no matter what happens today, Jim, Leicester of Swindon will be in the big money in the Premier League, and the game finishes today because there'll be extra time or even penalty kicks. Correct, yes. Actually, yeah, one of them's got to make it. Two noble Midland sides here, Saint, battling it out. They've given us some good football this year. And it's two. a full stadium, a wonderful atmosphere. It's an unbelievable it? sta stadium atmosphere here, and, and tr two really traditional colours, isn't there? There's the old red and white and the blue and white and, and it sort of blends in beautifully together really very nice very nice sight carry on okay well at half time today we have a competition for you with another trip to america up for grabs but first we can enjoy the rest of the weekend playoff action in a moment west brom's win over Port vale but first we go back to saturday afternoon for york city against crew mcmillan on side Barnes, good play from him, tricky again, left foot through, chance, goal! York in front! And can you believe it, it's Gary Swan again. The man whose goal brought York City to Wembley, it was his first goal for the club, and now the only man in the team born in York gets the goal that could win promotion. Crew, a corner kick for them. It's Bill Levels, is that a handball? It is! Oh, no! And in the last minute of extra time, Crew have the opportunity to force a penalty shootout. Dave McKinney is the man charged with the responsibility. Can Dean Kiley stop it? No, it's a goal for McKinney! The match is surely going to go to a penalty shootout now. Well, it did, and the pressure now on the goalkeepers. We join the shootout after five kicks, 3-2 to York City. Woolley versus Kylie. He saved it! It's the first miss. It's not all over yet, don't forget, it's the first miss. York can take a 4-2 lead here with their regular penalty taker, Nigel Pepper. He scored seven this season. He scored eight. And York lead 4-2 in the penalty shootout. He favours the long runner. Ashley Ward, he scores. That had to go in. And it's 4-3 now. Now it's Wayne Hall. He's got one goal all season. He's won them promotion! It's one of the greatest days in the history of York City. They play in Division 2 next season. Horton loses out. Hamilton knocks it forward. That's a great first time ball for Taylor. Bob Taylor. The free kick has been given for sure. And it'll be interesting to see what further action the referee takes against Peter Swan here. And Peter Swan sadly has the long walk back down the Wembley Tunnel. One of very few players in the history of the game to be dismissed at the world's most famous stadium. Chipped in again by Reed, and it's in this time, yes! It's Andy Hunt! A good touch here, just moves it to the side, clips it in, and there's the header, directed into the only place the poor keeper got no chance of getting that. Hunt. And it breaks suddenly. Donovan. And Reed has got forward from the back. Nicky Reid has surely now clinched a place in the first division for West Bromwich Albion. Donovan goes down, he looks up, he plays a little ball with the outside of the right foot. Reid gets a good first touch, keeper dives out at him, and he just keeps his call and plays it in the corner of the net. 
Bob Taylor with a good header. What a good, sensible thing that was to do to the brilliant Nicky Reid. It's a decent cross too, and Taylor turns it straight against uh, Aspin and still comes out with the ball. And in the end, Kevin Donovan has given Albion a certain place in the first division. 3-0. 40,000 Baggies fans celebrate. The trophy is important. The place in the first division, far more so. Well, without doubt, Jim, a big club, West Brom. It's certainly an idea they were a huge club, and, and it's nice to see 40-odd thousand fans coming down to support them. Yeah, 41, which apparently, I mean, you don't get that at a cup final because you just don't get that allocation of tickets. That's so right. it's a, a tremendous crowd. Yeah, I mean, we remember West Brom when we first went into the game. They were a big club, yeah. and it's nice to see them on the way back. Yeah, it's wonderful. You have to feel a little bit sorry for Port Vale, of course, but they've had a good season. They've, had a, they've won you know, a lot of games. I did feel sorry for Port Vale because in the first half I booked them down as the better team Ian and then with the sending off of Peter Swan I'm not so sure I, I didn't think he deserved to go but but then I'm a sentimentalist as you know but uh, and then uh, after that the door was open for Albion and, and and to be fair to them they took full advantage and well done of course to, to York City and uh, commiserations to crew who are doing yeah. such a fine job it's not there, the best way to go is it yeah, what a shame <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a short break now. Next, we'll be looking at this afternoon's playoff final in more detail, so stay with us. <laughs> now, both today's clubs have unpleasant memories of the Wembley playoffs. Leicester beaten here last year, while Swindon were denied a promotion place after winning here three years ago. Gabriel Clark reports. For sheer nail-biting tension, there's nothing like it in the football calendar. Swindon and Leicester have already endured the unique atmosphere of the playoff final, and getting here again has been the realistic ambition for most of a season in which their two previous games have stretched to breaking point. Colin Calderwood was sent off at Filbert Street before Christmas, and his wrestling match with Julian Jochim in April threatened to have serious consequences for Leicester. Jochim got the red card this time and was automatically ruled out of the first leg of the playoff semi-finals. But Leicester won an appeal against the decision and Jochim ended up coming on as substitute and turning the tie against Portsmouth their way. His goal gave them a lead to take to the south coast where they defended in numbers but with no little style at one end and maintained that ruthless edge at the other. Here's Thompson. Jochim alongside him. Still with Thompson. It's a great goal, and that might well settle it. In two games, Leicester had beaten a side who finished 12 points ahead of them after the previous 46, but there was no celebrating from manager Brian Little. After all, Leicester were just back where they started 12 months earlier, when Little took them all the way to Wembley in his first season as manager, but a place in the Premier League ended up hinging on a dubious penalty, won for Blackburn Rovers by David Speedy. The agony of going so close has been the biggest motivation since then. But for Swindon, the cruel disappointment of missing out on promotion runs even deeper. In the 1990 playoffs, led by Ozzie Diaz, they beat Sunderland to claim a place in the elite for the first time. But a Football League investigation into financial irregularities confined that achievement to just 10 days. That Swindon Town Football Club be demoted by two divisions i.e. to the third division as of season 1990-91. On appeal, Swindon were promoted back to the old second division, but Adiez left the following season. The only good news was that he recommended Glenn Hoddle to be his successor, and the Swindon board took up the recommendation. With no money and mediocre crowds, Hoddle has still maintained the footballing principles Adiez introduced and turned the lingering bitterness of three years ago into an overwhelming determination as Tranmere found out in the first leg of the semi-final. Here's Summerby for Swindon. It's a decent cross to the near post. It's an own goal! What a tragic start for Steve Vickers. What a marvellous start for Swindon. And Vickers, again, rather uncertain with that cross. And the shot almost comes to Mitchell. It's another goal! Incredible! Two goals in less than a minute for Swindon. Tranmere made a fight of it in the second leg, but ten minutes from the end, Swindon made sure of their place in the final. 
Oh, Mitchell is suddenly gifted the ball, and he's got Maskell off in support here, and finds Maskell, and it's saved, but Maskell has scored. That should be enough now to send Swindon Town to Wembley. As for today, form favours Leicester. Under Little, they've beaten Swindon twice and drawn with them twice in the last two years. And at Filbert Street, they're confident the £5 million facelift being carried out this summer will coincide with a place in the Premier League. So is Little, who's just pledged himself to Leicester till 1997. But just how he plans to deal with the influence of his opposite number might just be the key factor. It's Len Hoddle's first game at Wembley for five years, and if they lose, it could be his last for Swindon. So they're hoping the season ends as it began against Sunderland back in August, with Hoddle scoring the winner. Is that a lucky goal or what? Do you slightly think? lucky. I'll yeah. tell you, I'm so delighted that Glenn Hoddle is getting another game at Wembley, Jim. This will be his last one, obviously. But, he, I mean, he's such an influential player with Swindon. He, he has been, and, and of course, as you know, he's he's played as a sweeper, which of course has been a great advantage to them because he's been able to read the game and guide everybody from not being a, under pressure from that position. Really. And if things are going wrong, he just steps forward into midfield and he comes he in. Has, midfield player. He again. has been known to, yes, but he has. His passing, his distribution. Yeah. I saw the games against Tranmere Rovers and the, the cracking. Two both cracking games, I, I, and he played ever so I take it that the way that you are talking about Swindon, that you're going for Swindon. Well, I this fancy afternoon, Swindon. Right? I like the way they play, Jim. Yeah. I think the football is great. You know, obviously you see you see Leicester up in the Midlands a lot. Yes. The teams come out now. Yeah. Well, I think Leicester are going to be a tough cookie to beat this afternoon because since they got hammered by Newcastle, they've really come back and have meant business and. To Portsmouth's grief, I think they showed that. So I don't think they're going to take anything lying down at all. Well, I think they've shown a lot of character, Jim. And this little fella here, George, him, he's one guy with a lot of taste. He's, he's, man in the field, eh? he's the one who's got what you and I would call real genuine pace. He, he, he's quicker than anybody else. But the battle could be between how Glen Oddle plays for Swindon and really how Oldfield plays for Leicester because if he plays well, he seems to make Leicester tick a bit. He always battles, but it depends on how well he plays. But there's an handful all round for both sides, so uh, be interesting to see. Uh, isn't it interesting also that Brian Little, the manager there, his brother Alan uh, won with York City? That's right, he did indeed. So uh, it's, it's a great day for them, isn't it? I mean, look. OK, well, we'll take a quick break at this point, Jimmy, but you won't miss a thing at home. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Looked a dodgy ball, but I think he knew what he was doing. Calderwood. Spots the run by Mitchell, but uh, Smith was sticking very tight to the Swindon number nine then. Lifelong Leicester fan, by the way, uh, Richard Smith, not David Mitchell. He's travelled a lot in the game as well. Wicklow, Joe Chin. And Agnew comes out with the ball for Leicester. Looks for Oldfield. It's good play by Oldfield. Now Thompson. Philpott. Good cross of the ball if they give him room. I'm sure Swindon will know that and won't give him room. Whitlow. This is Philpott again. And that's not a bad cross, but it was well read by Ling. Now Bowden for Swindon. Hit long for Maskell to chase. Richard Smith, the covering player for Leicester. Poole got his foot so effectively behind that ball that Joe Chin was caught offside at the other end. Yes, that's the third time in the game that an offside decision has been given, and each time it's because of this irritating new rule where the goalkeeper is having to kick the ball down the field from back passes, a forward goes to challenge, he can't get back in time, the defence moves out, and we have a stoppage in the game with a free kick. And it was supposed to cut out that very thing, I agree with you, it is an irritating new rule. It's a season old now, and I'd like to see it be a one-season one then. I'm sure quite a lot of other people in football would. Although there's quite a few who wouldn't, to be fair. 
Here's Monka. Bowden. That's a good ball for Ling. Some of the overlapping. And it goes deep. And well read by Smith. Whitlow, the former Leeds United player, finding Thompson. Well played. Gary Mills. Walsh the target here. Good handling by Fraser Digby because Walsh is a very awkward customer when he's coming in at you like that. A big, powerful man. Yeah, he's very strong in the air, Steve Walsh, and he's very good at pulling away at the back post. Quite a good touch for a big man, and it's quite an inspired move by Brian Little this season to give him those games up front when they're failing to find the net regularly, and he's done pretty well. Gary Mills getting plenty of room. The former Nottingham Forest player finds David Oldfield. Smith. Oh, that was cut out by McLaren. Now Bowden. Mitchell. McLaren. Poor ball by him. And then Hill gives it away to Summerby. Four, five men forward here, Swindon. Maskell is one of them. Looking for Mitchell in the box, and Hill had to take control then for Leicester at the expense of a corner. This is where Swindon have been quite good this season. Sean Taylor comes from the edge of the box, and he's got a big leap and uh, scored several goals from set pieces. I think he's got almost double figures. Yes, you're right, he's got 12 goals, in fact, an incredible total for a central defender. Number six he is, and he's gone to a position on the near post. Calderwood, Mitchell also threats when the ball is played in high. That's Taylor. And the linesman has flagged there, I'm not quite sure why. He saw some infringement, maybe the ball went out of play. Uh, as it was flighted in from the corner anyway, Leicester have possession, so it doesn't really matter. Interesting to see Hoddle up uh, for that corner, that's not usually one of his forte's heading, but he went up to the far post for that corner. Taylor, who I was suggesting goes on the edge of the box, went to the near post, and I'm sure that's some thought of management there, changing the positions around. Oldfield for Leicester. Calderwood's challenge. Richard Smith can get quite some distance on these throws. Walsh is the usual target. Goes in even beyond him, and again, Fraser Digby anticipated it well. Bowden. Looking for Ling, but it wasn't a good ball. Has to have it back with Mills. Walsh, good header. Joe Lovely play by the teenager. And eventually, but with some difficulty, Swindon win it back. I just sensed a little bit of nervousness there when Joe Asham, his first touch, picked up that ball, attended to back off. Here's Agnew. No problem again for Fraser Digby. And as ever, Swindon. Get it moving forward as quickly as possible. McLaren. Mitchell did well then. Now Ling. Good ball for Moncair. Thompson's challenge. And it was good enough to win it back for Leicester. Whitlow. Thompson. A lot of room on the right for Mills. Oldfield outside him. He opts for the shot, and that might well have caught Fraser Digby slightly wrong-footed. He hasn't scored this season, Gary Mills. Would have been some place to open his account. Yeah, well, there he is. Good drive, European Cup finalist, of course, we're not in Forest. I signed Gary Mills from Notts County, he's been a marvellous signing for Leicester, but he's getting a lot of room in this game, and Steve Thompson's finding him with crossfield balls. McLaren, who's in the centre of midfield, sometimes on the left, sometimes centre, is just tucked in a little bit too much when the play's on the left, and Leicester are getting out too easily on their right. Thompson for Leicester City. 
Mills is there again, coming infield this time. And finding Jochen. Thompson. Agnew takes over. Smith. Thompson links most things together in midfield for Leicester. Agnew is having to stretch here and did well. Now Wicklow powering forward. Philpott on the left wing. And he finds him. Cross goes in flat and was well read by Calderwood, who was happy to concede the throw. Smith. Thompson takes over. Now Whitler. Looking for Walsh, far edge of the penalty area, knocks it down to Smith. In it goes to Joe Chim. Phil pops in behind him. Joe Chim there again. And then Oldfield and Swindon were rocking for a moment then. It's a good spell this by Leicester City. Excellent work by Gary Mills again. Hoddle's clearance was a good one though. Monker. the use of the ball by players on both sides so far. Bowden knocking it long, looking for Mitchell. Hill did well then. And it really is ebbing and flowing this game between both the sides. It's been an excellent start. 18 minutes gone, good football, no goals yet. Thompson. Joe Chin missed with his intended header. Sean Taylor, the covering defender. Now Ross McLaren. This is Martin Link. Well, he was always running into trouble there, really. But Swindon have it back. Well, it's one of the biggest pitches in the country, but there doesn't seem to be much room out there at the moment. He'll find some. McLaren. Leicester bided their time and the ball was gifted back to them. Yeah, you can play Swindon two ways. You can go and try and win it early and close them down and harass them and harry them. Or you can try and sit off them and wait for them to make a mistake. That looks like Leicester's policy when Swindon have the ball deep in defence. Oldfield found some room in the middle. Mills outside it. He's big and strong, and when he gets going, he's difficult to stop. This Thompson, who's got a good shot. 11 goals from midfield this season. A player you know plenty about, of course, David. Yeah, we signed him from Bolton at uh, Luton under freedom of contract, and um, I exchanged him reasonably quickly, one could say, for two very exciting young players from Leicester, two of the camp of Leicester's good youth scheme, and, of course, it was... Uh, Outside at the sign that uh, managed to attract Julian Joachim to Leicester too. Our chief scout, uh, Sammy Chapman, did a marvellous job there. One of the best young players I've ever worked with. Oh, you did have him then in the, the last few days, yeah? Outstanding schoolboy signing. Very good player, very pacey, very young though. And at the moment, in this atmosphere today, the youngest player on the field, not going to be easy for him to get into the game. He needs controlled passing from midfield. Leicester will need Agnew and Thompson to get plenty of ball. Agnew and David Ellery comparing haircuts there, I think. I should talk. Here's Hoddle. Driven out to the left wing to Bowden. Smith makes the interception. Taylor's having to trek back here. And Digby gets his foot right behind the ball. There's a heck of a clearance. Smith's under pressure and Mitchell almost got between him and the other goalkeeper, Kevin Poole. Whitler. And he sees it again. Hill knocking it forward, looking for Walsh. And the referee's given a free kick against Walsh for a foul on Colin Calderwood. Swindon captain in possession. 
Jochen made it hard for him then. Hoddle was there as a way out. Mitchell won the header, but there was no one up in support. Incidentally, this is Leicester City's sixth appearance at Wembley. Most of them, of course, before Brian Little took charge. And would you believe they've lost the previous five, four FA Cup finals, the last time in 1969, and last season's playoff against Blackburn. Nil-nil, midway through the first half here against Swindon. They're playing for riches, a place in the Premier League. two teams placing so much emphasis on possession of the ball both teams trying to care for the ball when they get it and pass the ball carefully and along the ground Swindon have gained a few yards and another throw in Mitchell has Hill right behind him and Whitlow whipped it off his toe and that's a corner watch again here for Swindon's key man coming forward for the kick Taylor, Calderwood, Mitchell Hoddle this time has gone to a position near the edge of the box. Some of you will take the kick. Hoddle's now gone near post. And it's lofted high towards Taylor. Oldfield got it away. Jochin got there just ahead of McLaren. But now Ling has it for Swindon. Bowden. Such confidence on the part of players on both sides in sweeping the ball about like that. This is Summerby. Good challenge, excellent tackle from Whitlow. Now Philpott. Walsh. Whitlow knocks it long. Jochen will use his pace to get in behind the central defenders here. And that's a goal kick, not the corner that Julian Jochen was hoping for. He's only 18 and he has got lightning acceleration, hasn't he, David? Yeah, we used to call him the little Brazilian. He's really got lower body power and he's got a tremendous... Uh, uh, thighs and explosive pace really he's a good jumper he's got terrific spring and he's uh, really emerged uh, under Brian Little at a very young age but um, I have to tell you I'm not too surprised he was really outstanding at 13 14 and 15 years of age clattering challenge there by Richard Smith on David Mitchell Swindon's free kick tough guy Mitchell no problem he'll pick himself up and Get on with it. Hobble knocks it forward. Summerby winning the header. Maskell is in there. Nobody knew where it was for a moment. Summerby did. And now Maskell. Well, that was a rather disappointing effort at the end of a promising moment. Yeah, I'm not sure if Summerby was a little bit fortunate there to um, win the referee's favour as he went for that ball and the ball... Uh, managed to get through to Maskell he couldn't get his feet in line and it was a little bit of a unbalanced toe poke with his left foot that left it rather easy for Kevin Poole Mills for Leicester Oldfield Whitlow getting forward well and Philpott outside him and he finds him they're queuing up for a good cross here and a good cross comes in towards Walsh well, that was a bit of vintage Leicester City play. And Steve Walsh, who scored 12 in 19 games since being moved forward from centre-half to centre-forward, on the end of this excellent cross. Yeah, that's the ball where Philpott likes it. Nice ball, got up well. But Sean Taylor did well to back in right at the back post. Just put Steve Walsh off enough to prevent him heading it back across the goal. for Swindon, loses out, Oldfield, and that's a foul. John Gregory on his feet, one of the experienced assistants that Brian Little has here, Alan Evans, former Villa man, another very good team he's got together behind the scenes as well as on the field. 
Wicklow. That's a good cross. Oldfield. Thompson. Good move by Leicester City. Just couldn't quite get over that ball on the half volley. Here's Whitlow on that ball on the left. Got bodies in the box for the first time. Plenty of bodies there. When the ball comes out, it's Oldfield. Picks the ball up, heads it across. Just not able to keep the ball down. There's Oldfield again winning it. But Moncur gets it back and that's a dangerous ball. And it's Maskell taking on Poole. And the goalkeeper had to go all the way to the edge of his territory to get that ball. You just feel at times that uh, Maskell and Mitchell have just got a little bit of space either side of the two Leicester centre-backs. Particularly as Mills and Whitlow are joining in now as Leicester have got much more into the game. Maskell charged from behind by Whitlow, that has to be a free kick to Swindon. And uh, the referee will want to speak to Whitlow. must say how much the referees have come on this season. They started off in black and then it was green and purple. I'm sure David Ellery, uh, I'm not sure what he thinks of his white trim around his black shorts, but um, the referee just the same. It's no different if they were professional referees or as they are today. The referee, honestly. And the colour of the card shown to Whitlow, the same as the colour of uh, the referee's jersey. It's a yellow one. Two players booked now, some of the... Of Swindon, Wicklow, of Leicester. Mitchell won a good header, and it was just behind Maskell. Had it just been ahead of him, it would have been an opening. Wicklow looking for Walsh, and I think it was Joe Jim ahead of him who was offside. Swindon Town's third time in the playoffs this, by the way. They won the old third division playoff in 1987 against Gillingham after a replay and, of course, as you know, beat Sunderland 1-0 here in 1990. Although, as you've heard, it was Sunderland who went up because the authorities decided to keep Swindon down because of illegal payments to players. It was a cruel experience then for Swindon and their supporters, particularly their supporters, who were innocent, of course, of... Any uh, misdemeanours. And there's still a feeling of injustice in Swindon about the whole affair. Here's Hoddle. Took a chance then with Mills flying in on him. Taylor gets it clear. Well, the hallmark of every great player is uh, not to be hurried in possession, but Mills... Uh, achieved the seemingly impossible of hurrying Glenn Hoddle into it then. He goes Ling for Swindon. Joe Chin's challenge, and I'm not sure that was a foul, I really don't agree with the referee on that. I thought Joe Chin made a decent challenge for the ball then. Well, you're not alone, there's 40,000 people sitting to our right that also agree with you, and, uh, and I tend to agree with you also, Alan. I think that he was a little bit fortunate there. There you see Ling running the ball, Joe Chin gets in front of him, really. Actually, in fact, he, he doesn't take the ball. So I think David Ellery, on reflection, is, as usual, correct. Hoddle's free kick. Mitchell getting up well. Hill gets it clear. Hoddle straight back in. Maskell. And it's a second shooting opportunity, and he didn't, uh, again, really have the time to strike his shot properly. Mills. Driven long for Walsh, wasn't a bad ball. Calderwood hustled aside by Walsh. And did that go over the line? The linesman is flagging. However, to Leicester's disappointment and Calderwood's relief for a goal kick. Well, Steve Walsh didn't seem to make a fuss about that, but I thought that could well have been a Leicester corner. Nil-nil. Four minutes remaining in the first half. Good interception from Wicklow, and again a good strong challenge as Maskell came in. This is Agnew, taken off him by Ross McLaren. Yes. 
Manchester have had an inconsistent sort of season. Their best spell came in March when they had seven consecutive league victories, but they only won one of their last five games, and they had that 7-1 thumping up at Newcastle United towards the end of the season. Here's Ling for Swindon. Swindon who finished fifth on 76 points, the same total, in fact, as Leicester. John Gorman, the ex-Spurs, Celtic and Carlisle player, is the number two to Glenn Hoddle, and obviously, when Glenn is actually playing, he's the man who runs it from the tunnel. line. And quite an influence to Alan, uh, sitting on the other bench uh, twice this season against Swindon, a uh, very important uh, part of this Wyndham setup because often the manager playing in centre back can't see the whole field as easily as the man on the bench. That was difficult there for Poole, the goalkeeper. Mitchell made sure it was difficult and Poole did well under pressure. Whitlow drives it forward and Joe Chim was offside. You'd only need one opportunity to spring that trap though. of the season, Julian Jochi, who's only 18, was still uh, on YTS forms, I believe, at Leicester, and used to clean the senior players' boots and attend college every afternoon. Remarkable to think now, he's probably one of the hottest properties in the game. We have 12 minutes remaining in the first half here of the first division playoff final at Wembley Stadium. Leicester City nil, Swindon Town nil. The prize is a place in the Premier League. Healthy run up from the back then to receive that throw. Now Summerby. It's a good ball. Moncare finds room. And then finds Bowden. And it goes towards Mitchell and Agnew came to meet it and heads behind for a corner. Yeah, interesting Moncur trying to get Bowden in the game. He hasn't been in the game as much as possibly Swindon would like. It's important that he pushes forward a little bit. That will do two things. It will give Swindon a chance in possession and it will also stop Leicester getting out so easily with Gary Mills from Steve Thompson's wide passes. Well, they've had a couple of right-wing corners, Swindon, that they haven't made the best of yet. Let's see how they do from the other flank. Bowden to take it. Thumps it in and touched on towards Mitchell. Well, it took so long, really, to line up the shot, but the opportunity went. Here's Joe Chip. Well played, Summerby, stuck tight to him then. Tremendous challenge by Richard Smith in the box there when Mitchell looked as though he had the shooting chance. He delayed, but Smith did tremendous to block. And here's the moment again. Best to go forward with Mills, looking for Walsh. And him and Calderwood clash, it comes to Agnew. Walsh looking for Joe Chin, and the keeper had to really stretch to palm that one away. Ling gets it upfield. Mills. Hill. Thompson. And now Wicklow. Philpott to his left as ever. Oh, it's given away badly by Walsh. This is Maskell. That's what you call tight marking. Well played, Colin Hill. Forced Maskell all the way back to his own goalkeeper. Philpott. Wicklow knocks it on, but not very accurately. Calderwood's interception. Huddle available as usual. Wasn't the best ball he's played, straight to Oldfield. Taylor with a great saving tackle on David Oldfield. Really great challenge. Bowden knocks it long, looking for Mitchell. And 
Smith loses out and then Mitchell is brought down. In fact, I think the linesman has indicated there was an offside when he received that ball, yes. So it'll be Leicester who get the free kick, not Swindon. Meantime, David Oldfield, back inside the uh, Swindon half, is receiving treatment. You just get the impression at times, Swindon defensively, when they come under pressure, live a little bit dangerously. It's not just Glenn Hoddle that's comfortable on the ball. They all like to play the ball and work the ball out, and sometimes it needs a good hump. David Oldfield, as you can see, was born in Australia, although he actually... Uh, moved back to England with his English parents when he was only four. He goes back every summer to see his relatives. He would like to go back and tell them this summer that he'd be playing in the Premier League next season. No goals then in this match with eight minutes remaining. Perhaps this is the closest we've had so far. Good stretch there by the Swindon keeper Digby. Taylor, Oldfield. Well, it took two men to dispossess him, but dispossess him they did. Now Moncur, Summerby, Masker. Summerby goes outside him, on it goes to Moncur. And Summerby couldn't quite reach it, goal kick. Monker's just looking to break a little bit now towards the Swindon front two, really. They've got a little arc in midfield of Monker, McLaren and Ling. Hoddle sitting behind them. But if anything, they probably need a little bit more thrust coming from deeper to support Maskell and Ling. They haven't had enough efforts at goal in this half. Strange how it goes, this is the, the third of the uh, three playoff finals I've been to this weekend. And uh, in each case, the first half is very tight nothing between the sides and then inevitably at the end of a long season on this uh, grueling sort of pitch and in this kind of weather players tired in the second half and uh, the second half is much more open in both the third and the second division playoff finals McLaren Masker turned into trouble Thompson takes it off him and now Philpott struggling to keep up with him <laughs> make sure why don't you Nicky Summerby pumped that one over the line he did a good job there McLaren trying to stay with Phil Pot, giving Summerby chance to get round and uh, put that ball into touch but uh, Richard Smith will sling it into that six yard box again five minutes to half time nil nil in it goes towards Walsh who got the touch to joke him and Oldfield arrives ooh he almost squeezed that one in between the goalkeeper's right hand and the post. Good save by Fraser Digby. Leicester still in possession. Goal kick. Leicester certainly come more into the game. Here you see that throw, Richard Smith. It is a weapon that Leicester have used effectively all season. Walsh's presence causing confusion. Oldfield taking it off to Oishim. And that shot on the turn, which Digby just covers at the near post. Once again, Leicester beginning to power into the game a little bit and pushing Swindon back. This is Thompson for Leicester. Whitlow. Back it goes to Thompson. On to Walsh. Good ball for Whitlow. Agnew takes it off him. <laughs> I think he thought that Philpott was continuing his run outside him then, but he wasn't. He was wrong. Hobble. Link. Now 
Wonka. They've gone from left to right flank. Somerby whips it into Maskell. Well played. Hobble. trying to hit back instantly three minutes of the first half remaining Van Hoddle's third goal of the season has given Swindon Town a little bit of daylight here beautifully finished excellently set up by Maskell a typical Swindon Town goal because in the build-up they swept the ball from left flank to right kept creating kept their accuracy and style which has been their hallmark all season and his hallmark throughout his career Walsh goes down under the challenge and Leicester get a free kick the stadium really brought to life by that goal now a beautiful colourful sight anyway today as we were saying beforehand with the red and the white of course, it's the red half in ecstasy. The referee will bring the ball back here because he's given a free kick to Swindon and they took it a little bit too quickly. I don't think he really made his instructions very clear to the players there, David Ellery, and I think that's why the confusion happened. Well, it looked as though he'd given a free kick for Walsh, uh, being mishandled or manhandled. The linesman then gave an offside, similar to a recent incident on the far side there with Mitchell and he gave it in favour of Swindon because the offside the linesman's flag had been raised before he gave the decision for the free kick. And then when Moncur tries to run away with the ball, he got also manhandled, and David Ellery hadn't allowed play to go on, so there you see it there. Moncur, not really the strongest, but he got some really tough challenges there. Almost three. So at the end of that moment of absolute confusion, the ball is out of play again. And it's Leicester's throw, but a goal behind. Glenn Hoddle has given Swindon the lead. Joe Chin, beaten by Calderwood. Monker. Bowden. Now Ling. Bowden's there again. And again. But he's given it away, it's time to Thompson. And that's a good ball for Whitler. Calderwood wins it back. McLaren going in like a train on Thompson. Brilliant play. Ling. Mitchell free on the left flank. We're into stoppage time. On it goes to Mitchell. Bowden. Monker. The goal scorer, the player manager, the maestro. And that crossfield ball has almost produced a corner to goal kick. Yeah, a wonderful play. Hoddle always available. It's marvellous to see when the ball goes wide, he always follows the ball across, so he's available to have the ball back to switch the ball from the next pass. Outstanding playing deep for Swindon. Just like, in a strange way, Steve Thompson is playing quite outstandingly for Leicester. Also, come very deep to accept the ball and spread the ball wide. We've had a minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Swindon Town leading by a goal to nil here. Swindon have never played amongst the elite of English football in the history which stretches back over a hundred years. Leicester City have never won at Wembley on their previous five visits. 
Here's Walsh. Taken away by Somerby. Whacks it gloriously upfield. Smith turning it back. And Poole panicked a little bit when he saw Masco coming in on him. Well won back here by Ling for Swindon. Agnew denying him any room. But he keeps possession. McLaren and Ling again. Swindon's throw in and they'll only just about have time to take it. They've had a couple of minutes added already. In fact, the referee has given a free kick. Even Swindon would a bit be amused by that one. Some of you will take it. It's not a bad one either. Mitchell coming in behind Poole and the goalkeeper did really well for Leicester then. His handling had to be immaculate. That's half-time. Leicester City nil, Swindon Town won. Let's have the views of Ben Hoddle's assistant, John Gorman, talking to Gary Newbold. Tremendous goal, Mike. And what about your thoughts on the first half? Oh, it's been a very good game. Uh, magic crowd. Leicester's played well, we passed the ball well, and it's um, been a very entertaining game. But we were just starting to build up nicely, and um, the move that the goal came from was excellent. And Craig Masco done ever so well, held it up from back heel for Glenn. What a finish for Glenn Hoddle. He's first, he scored in the first game of the season, and he scored today. So What are you going to tell the players now? We're just going to keep it going and be patient and, and not get too excited now, because there's still another 45 minutes. It's going to be a very hard game. Thanks, Thank Gary. Hello, yeah, we'll have another look at that Glenn Hoddle goal after this short break. Five twenty-five to Dorking isn't what it used to be. Ah, Denmark. They say that nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina. Oh, we'll see. Taxi. Um, it's all right. I'll walk. Most kind. So, how much um? Keep the change. You haven't got any Carlsberg by any chance? Well, my name is Denmark. Are you from England? Yeah. Is this your first time? No, I've been from England lots of times before. You're witnessing a once-in-a-lifetime event. of a car that takes motoring into a new era. The Citroen Xantia. With its unique road handling system, the Xantia offers levels of refinement and a degree of control and security you've never experienced before. The Citroen Xantia, the car to eclipse all others. At Harvester, from Monday to Thursday after 7 p.m., you can order a very special meal for two for just £13.99, including as much as you like from the Harvester salad cart. The Combine Harvester. It's made for sharing. Welcome to a city in the heart of the country. 
but at the busiest places. People are specially employed to make sure you don't get lost. Where tea may be served at four, at six, even at eight. Where every table has a window seat. Welcome to a city by the sea, where the pebbles stretch for thousands of miles. Welcome to Intercity. Welcome back. So Swindon won Leicester nil. And really, Jim, it was a game that's been nice to watch, but there hasn't been an awful lot of goal-mouth incidents. Well, hardly any. I mean, up until the goal, really, both goalkeepers could have had a walkabout and not really bothered themselves. But, uh, as you say, a lot of good football's been played, but very little penetration. Very little penetration. Let's look then at the, the, the little gem, the, because it was a gem. The one time when, when it really all did happen was... And it's a great back heel, isn't it, from Mitchell? Great back hill and Glenn Hoddle. We all know that he's going to shoot like that because that's his forte. It always has been. He never blasts the ball. It's a side foot pass into the back of the net. Beautifully executed. No answer to that. No team in the world has got an answer to that. Well, there you are, Jim. Now, Hoddle's playing as a sweeper. He's been playing at the back, <laughs> and yet he pops up there yeah. and, and knocks it in. He's... Now, that surely, for me, is an indication of how the game should be played. Yeah. If you're playing as a sweeper. Well, he's he showed well there, obviously. We, we know that. In fact, he's done it a couple of times. He's popped up, but the ball hasn't quite reached him. That yeah. particular time it did. And really, when you're looking at an England team that we've got, this bloke's the only bloke who's, who's been passing it all around the, the stadium and he's found everybody. Different well, class. Let's look at uh, Leicester's couple of efforts they had. Yeah, you see, not an awful lot. At one time, they looked to get in, into the game and looked to take command. And this indeed was, was a good pass, good, good cross by Phil Pot. And I, I think Walsh Never really had a chance at that. It uh, it was always a, a bit too long for him. This one was actually the first time, and this was towards the end of the half, where where actually somebody had a shot on goal, and it was Oldfield, and he actually he actually made the keeper actually save it. Though. Did we had to make the save? He did. He did, which was a shock to his system. Yeah, well, now where can Leicester get the goal from, Jim? Because it looked to me as if they're really not. Got many ideas. They're not showing a great deal of no. imagination. I think this half it's going to be even harder for them because they've got a very strong wind. Now, what I would be doing with with Joe Chim being as quick as uh, quicker than anybody on the field, I'd be looking to get the ball down the channel. Yes, and because he will get past the Swindon players. He's got the pace, but they're going to have to do that. They didn't do it in no. the first half, or even when they tried to do it, their execution wasn't good. So if I was Leicester, I'd be looking to get that ball over the back of the Swindon defence and let Joe Chim have a go at it. Well, we'll see if they do that in the second half. Why not? They? Yes. No, it's competition time, and first the winner of our most recent quiz. Keith Thompson from Andover will be enjoying the England-Brazil-US Cup match in Washington on June 13th for correctly telling us that England were knocked out of the 1990 World Cup by Germany. Right, now our next poser, and we're offering a VIP trip for two to Detroit for the England-Germany match on June 19th with American Airlines. If you can tell us who scored England's first goal against Germany in the 1966 oh, World difficult. Cup final. Very difficult. <laughs> the number to call 0891 33 That's 0891 33 3 And the lines are open now and your call will last no longer than one minute. Well, it's time for another break now when we come back. It's the second half of Leicester against Swindon. Stay with us. Out of the dial the night.
regarde La Stella Artois est arrivée. The cleaner found the front door open, the professor's missing, and so is the Rubens. He took the piano. The painting, sir, on loan from the college. <laughs> well, you went to see our professor again. I think you will, sir. Last number he dialed was 081 203000. Doesn't ring a bell, Wallace. He's asked for details about the new BT share offer. That was months ago, Wallace. The government kept some shares back, sir. You can register for information now. Let's move then. You can start by bringing in the accomplice, sir. A cleaner, Wallace. Sir? The BT3 share offer. It could be worth investigating. Register for information on 081 203000 or with a share shop. The new Peugeot 306 drives the imagination. This man is looking out for people having their first taste of new Twix ice cream. He knows after they bite through milk chocolate into cool vanilla ice cream, they won't expect crumbly biscuits. Watch out for new Twix ice cream. Do you like that? Yeah. Do you like this one? Yeah, it looks nice. I'm not sure. What about these? I like them if you like them. What's wrong with you? Nothing, I'm just hungry, that's all. You're always hungry, you are. Yeah, what do you think if I had high shoes? Like, you know, sort of. You like that? I do like it, but well, do let's you? Have that, I love it, really. <laughs> Honestly. He's really. driving me, man. Oh, well, look. Big Mac. I'll have a Big Mac. 100% beef, 100% big. Sometimes only a Big Mac will do. If you get a milkshake, I could have some of it. No, no, no. The choice is yours. What do you think? back to Wembley the teams are still in the dressing rooms and Jimmy I'm just thinking there that it's going to be ever so difficult now for Leicester because Swindon are one team that when they get in front they keep a hold of the ball and here at Wembley you know their confidence will build and I think they'll knock it around and uh, it's going to be very difficult for Leicester to get it off them. Oh you're quite right they're a very good football inside and they can play keep ball extraordinarily well and I do think that the wind as I say won't suit Leicester's game now because they've got to try and get behind the Swindon defence and the ball won't hold up like it did in the first half. So they have got difficulties, no question. In the early stages, you know, they were rampaging down the right. Mills was getting a tremendous amount of room yeah. down the right-hand side. Swindon seemed to have resolved that a little bit. Either that or Mills got fed up doing it and he's maybe feeling the pace yeah. a bit. Well, it's hard yeah. work for them. He's, he was running 60 yards there. Yeah, and, and actually, although he was getting out and there was a a lot of room down there, they actually didn't really create anything from that particular part of the field when they should have done. So whilst we were saying they're getting plenty of room out there, yeah, I don't know, maybe Swindon were quite happy to let them have the ball well, out was, there because uh, nothing happened. Uh, no end product I mean, nothing thing. really, I mean, Leicester have not. The, the bottom line to this game so far is that Leicester have not got to grips with the situation at all. Swindon have to a degree, particularly the last five minutes when they scored the goal, which was superbly executed, beautiful build-up. That was the one time where both, where the one side showed its real class. The other side hasn't done so, so far. I, th I thought that Thompson playing in midfield for Leicester is having a good game. And here's one player, Jimmy, he's had a couple of pots that go from yeah. so 25 yards, 30 yeah. yards. But they've got to get the ball in and give him a chance near a goal, he, I would think. He's having a good... Leicester are not playing badly here. 
We know that. But what they're not doing is they're not penetrating. You know, we all know you've got to get in that box and you've got, you've got to score. To score goals, you've got to get in that box. It's no good arguing about 25-yard shots. Well, it, the teams are, are on their way out there, and I think Gary got... Newborn is down there Brian with Little, Brian is Little. Good. Brian, obviously a big blow for you, giving a goal away three minutes before half-time. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think the game was fairly even. They've had a little bit more possession at times than us in midfield. We're going to try and push on them a little bit more. We need to get one or two decent balls in the box, which we haven't done as much as we would like to do. But we've got to get in amongst them. We've got to get uh, midfield players close to theirs, midfield players around to their box, and, and we've got to gamble a little bit. But we're going to have a go at it. You'll be hoping, of course, that Leicester eventually win here. Leicester, over the years, can't win here. Yeah, well, we'll try and sort that one out. Hopefully today will be the day. Thank you. All right, thank you. Alan Parry with David Fleet back here in the commentary box. Glenn Hoddle's goal separating the sides and uh, as was said at the time you don't need to absolutely blast the leather off the ball to find the back of the net and he he caressed it into the net beautiful goal but Leicester City are not the type of side to lay down and die of that you can be absolutely certain and I think we will see them perform better in this second half as they get the half underway, attacking now from left to right. Leicester City all in blue, remember? Swindon all in red. A place in the Premier League next season is the trophy they're playing for. Agnew did well to keep that in. And Calderwood didn't quite know what to do with that. And Hoddle played the most <laughs> outrageously cheeky ball back to him there, and they got away. That's Swindon. They've more than got away with it, they've turned defence into attack. Maskell. Bode. Back on to Maskell. And Leicester City concede the throw, Richard Smith's clearance. Taylor, Monker, and Ling. These two move around and create so much room in the middle of the field. Monker again. Good ball for Bodin. Mitchell makes the run towards the penalty spot, but it goes in along the ground, and it still comes to Mitchell. And now to Ling, and back to Mitchell. Couldn't blunder his way through those three defenders, though. Oldfield just misses out. Taylor intercepts. On it goes to Maskell, he's onside. He has Mitchell in the box, otherwise he's full of Leicester defenders. So he goes outside the box to Moncair. Good run by him, and now Maskell! Place that ball perfectly. Now we will see an onslaught by Leicester, and I'm sure it will be marvellous for the game. If I was asked to predict privately before the game, I suggested 3 2 to Leicester. They're going to have the work cut out to do that now, but no two halves are ever similar, and I would expect Leicester to really go for Swindon now, and Swindon have to defend really cleverly for the rest of the game. A goal either side of half time. Apart from the interval, just five minutes separated them. The 42nd and 47th minutes. And it's given Swindon Town now a marvellous platform to go on and clinch for the first time in their history a place in the Premier League. Leicester have to get a goal back soon, you feel, to give them any life now, to give them any hope. It's the captain, Gary Mills. Hill on to Joe Agnew just outside it Philpott 
forces it through to Walsh, and Walsh goes down, but no penalty is awarded. Well, it must have been a heart-in-the-mouth moment for Swindon Town. Smith throwing it in, and the referee's in fact given a free kick against Walsh. It's very important now that Leicester keep calm and don't lose their cool, because they're going to have to play with a little bit more uh, uh, balls forward quicker, as Jimmy Greaves was suggesting at half-time. Try and get Joe Asham in the channels, but of course that's not so easy if Swindon sit deep. Here we see the incident there with, uh, with Walsh. And looking at it again, I think the referee was spot on, really. He just uh, fell over Taylor's outstretched leg. There was no intent. There's a good ball from Ling to Mitchell. Good covering by Colin Hill. Mills. Smith has got loads of time to move forward here. But time is not on Leicester City's side in the game. They're two behind. The official attendance just been given me 73,802. Jochen. He could be the man to get Leicester back into this game if anyone can. He has not earned the corner he was hoping for there. We can have another look at Swindon's second goal here. Craig Maskell, just as he did in the first, had a key part to play. This time he was the finisher. He'd been the provider for Hoddle just before half-time. It's his 24th goal of the season. We talk about goal attempts. Jimmy was talking about goal attempts at half-time but I would suggest that Swindon have scored two out of possibly five goal attempts, so that's a pretty good percentage. Bit of a flare up there, Thompson and then Walsh getting angry with John Moncair. Referee will calm it all down. I think he wants to speak to Walsh as well. Well, Brian Little had been saying, hadn't he, just seconds earlier when he was being interviewed in the tunnel, that they would give it a go, and then seconds later, almost as he'd taken his place on the bench there, he saw a second goal conceded, and he saw the mountain grow a little higher. Hill. Joe Chip. Taylor comes in and wins it off him. And this is Ling, just behind Mitchell. Philpott. Intercepted by Ling. McLaren. Some of the out on the right. This should be the classic stage now for uh, Swindon. Two goals up at Wembley. Lovely grass. The breeze has dropped a little bit. And they pass the ball along the floor. And if they can keep doing that keep possession of the ball, they'll make it difficult for Leicester. It's the Wiltshire sound that's echoing around Wembley Stadium at the moment. They lead Leicester City by two goals to nil. Smith has caused problems though to Swindon with these long throws already in this game. And there's another one aimed towards Walsh. The goalkeeper got a fist to it. And Bowden got it away. And Smith has given it away to Moncare. Lovely play. Oh, well played, John Moncare. That was excellent. Ling. It's a good, positive run forward. And he's got Summerby coming up in support. And finds him. And he's won a corner. That was really good counter-attacking play by Swindon. Moncur's got a lovely skillful touch and once again, like Steve Thompson of Leicester, when he comes deep as the ball, he can weave all sorts of patterns. Moncur has earned this corner with his skill. And it goes high towards Taylor. Walsh got there ahead of him, though. Moncare plays it back in again, and no offside! And Taylor has scored! And that surely means it's the Premier League for Swindon Town now! The big defender gets his 13th goal of the season. 
He who hesitates pays the price. Taylor threw his head in where it hurts, and he is rewarded with the most crucial goal of Swindon's season. That's a, well, that, that's a 13th goal eh, this season for the Taylor, and uh, 13, lucky 13. There was a caution, I'm not sure why, as we were watching the replay of the goal, Steve Walsh of Leicester maybe said something to the referee, and he has uh, gone into the book. It's surely impossible for Leicester to come back from this, is it? There are only ten minutes gone in the second half, they've got time to do it. Here's Whitlow. Did well, and Walsh, I'm afraid to say, hit that one rather like a centre-half, not a centre-forward. Yeah, Brian Little are looking at his substitute options at the moment. He's got Ian Ormondroyd and Colin Gibson. Ian Ormondroyd only really gives them height up front. Um, he could put him on and manoeuvre with Steve Walsh, more likely probably playing wide left for Lee Philpott, who so far hasn't really been able to have any effect on the game. Colin Gibson, his substitute, his other substitute, is very much a cover defender, and I don't know whether he could influence things. Here's Ling. Swindon leading 3-0. On it goes for Mitchell. He'll chase and chase. And he's still battling away. And that'll just go out with it. Yes, throw in. When we look at the replay for the goal, we'll see that there was a... Uh, a decision, a disagreement between the referee and the linesman, and of course it's the referee's decision that's count. The referee gave the corner, the linesman was happy enough to give the goal kick. But the corner it was, and eventually it resulted in Taylor heading that goal. Maybe that's what Walsh was arguing about when he was cautioned. The ball comes to Maskell. Agnew gets it away. This is Mills. Oldfield's made a good run up front, he finds Jochin, challenged by McLaren, now Thompson. Whitlow has Philpott hugging the left touch line. And Oldfield gets it back to him, that's a good ball. Philpott's cross is an excellent one, Walsh is there! reacts first and Jimmy Greaves was talking about lack of efforts at goal well we've had four goals already and I think there's more to come Mallon well I personally enjoyed the first half the second half is proving even better and it's only 12 minutes old the first half lacked the frenzy that some enjoy in the goal mouth but for purists it was all poise and style and no two halves are ever the same and this half's exploded now did I discount Leicester City too early? Did Swindon Town discount them too early? Here goes Joe Chim flying forward again. Tackled by Taylor. Ball's gone out of play, but it's a goal kick. Julian Joe Chim's 14th goal this season. The 18-year-old has given Leicester City a lifeline. We used to have to take him to the train station to make sure he caught the correct train when he used to come on his school holidays, uh, Alan. He's come a long way, he's, uh, I'm sure he knows when to report for training now and uh, what to do. He certainly knew what to do when that ball came out to him. He buried it into the back of Swindon's net. Only 18. Moncur, Ling, Whitlow took it off him, but Hoddle's in control. The long ball aimed at Mitchell, Smith's clearance, Moncare onto it again, did well there, did really well, he's had an excellent game, John Moncare. Now Bowden. Moncare again, Maskell. Plays it on for Mitchell, and it breaks to Ling. Back in towards Mitchell. The whistle's gone, it's a free kick anyway, as Smith and uh, Mitchell 
have a minor disagreement. Free kick to Leicester. Once again, the standard of crossing has been pretty good. Kevin Paul made a little bit of a mess of that one. Free kick to Leicester. And they picked up the pace and they got the bit between their teeth. But they're still two goals behind. Thompson. What a good ball that was. Mills. That's a foul. Bowden committed himself then and has paid the price. Free kick. And goodness me, if Leicester get another one back, this place really will be buzzing. Steve Thompson is their real free kick expert. He can have a strike goal, though, you would think from here. You would think, anyway, that's perhaps not really on. Phil Potts, the other one, huddled over the ball. And in it goes. And the header by Smith must have caught a swing and defender because they've got a corner. And this is where Leicester are strong from corners. Swindon will know that, they will fear that. And it's a well-flighted corner too. Walsh gets up and knocks it back into the danger zone. Hill prods it on to Agnew. a throw for Leicester. Richard Smith coming over to take this throw in again. I think Glenn Hoddle had a word with his goalkeeper before the game and has asked him to deal with as many of these throws as possible. He won't be able to deal with that one. Taylor got it away and then Moncare, but all the pressure on the Swindon goal now. They lead 3-1. Hoddle battling away with Joe Chin and the... Decision has gone in Swindon's favour. I think Brian Little must have had a word with Richard Smith at half-time. In the first half, he was throwing him into that box, and the goalkeeper uh, was coming for them free and uh, making sure that um, Leicester couldn't get anything out of them. But there was a flatter throw, impossible for the goalkeeper, Digby, to come and take. Thompson for Leicester City. Very much back in the picture at the moment. Mills, Hoddle intercepts, Ling plays it back to him, I don't think he really wanted it then. And well played Walsh to take it off him, and then he's full by Hoddle. And Hoddle's going to be cautioned, he hasn't had too many of them in his career. He's had one or two this season actually, Alan, and uh, you know, it's bound to happen, particularly when you play at the back, or all his career he's played more in the middle third of the field. This season he's played at the back and just occasionally you have to go for a challenge and you're a little bit late. There he's got caught. He thought that ball was going into touch. Walsh did exceptionally well to keep it in play. And there's Hoddle going a little bit late on Walsh of all people. Well, he was getting uh, his shirt tugged and everything before that. Uh, it was a bit harsh by Mr. Ellery and myself. Anyway, he's booked and the free kick goes in. He's just wide from Smith. Not scored this season. And that would have been a very useful moment to open his account, wouldn't it? Yeah, lovely ball flighted. Gives the man running in plenty of time to assess his movement. And Richard Smith's not far wide there. Well, it's an intriguing stage of the game, this. With Leicester having... Seemingly come back from the dead, 3-0 down, back to 3-1, and very much controlling things at the moment. Another goal, David, for Leicester now, and we really would be a boiling point. Yes, I think that 1-0 uh, at half-time, one expected some kind of Leicester assault. The second goal will really have got the Leicester blood boiling, and they're going to really throw everything now uh, at Swindon. I don't know if Swindon have got the pace to counter-attack against them. What they must do is keep very calm when they gain possession and try and build the play and keep the ball away from Leicester. Time is so valuable. Well played Whitlow for Leicester. 
Philpott. Agnew. Well, he really invited Digby to come and collect that, and he didn't let him down. Fraser Digby, one of the few who remains from the old third division playoff final six years ago, and also played against Sunderland three years ago. I was fortunate enough to be at that game against Sunderland and it was the most marvellous exhibition of football by Swindon. Smith driving it on again, good header away by Calderwood though. Mitchell retrieves it for Swindon and this is Moncare. And that's a free kick, fouled by Thompson. Twenty-five minutes to go. Leicester City one, Swindon Town three. Hoddle takes the free kick. Glorious ball, Bowden. Headed away by Smith, but there's Ling, and now Bowden. Mills wins it back for Leicester. That's a good challenge from Moncare. He's my man of the match, Moncare, so far anyway. Ling. Haskell. Mitchell on the far post, Hill got it away. McLaren to Ling, on to Maskell, back to Ling again. Keep possession, that's the order at the moment for Swindon. But they haven't done so. Agnew. Taylor gets it away, a rock at the back for Swindon. Lovely little turn by Ling. This boy's been really exciting all season for me, for Swindon Ling. He's had a career in the lower leagues, but this year he's played outstandingly well. Well, McLaren got the pass all wrong then, and Leicester have it back with Philpott. Walsh driving it on too deep. Do you think Brian Little might be thinking about changing something now, David, and a, a substitution perhaps, or would you leave it if you were him? Yes, I think I would uh, leave it and uh, hope. I think he's got his best 11 on the field. I think both sides came in today's game with all players fit, the players that they want, the players that are important to them. And um, I'm quite sure that Brian Little would feel that this is his best combination and they've got to stick at it. I do feel, however, that Swindon might make a change. Ling goes forward, but Mitchell's offside. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, Steve White came into the fray in the last 15 minutes to add a, li add a little bit of surge down the channels, possibly for Haskell, um, you know, to give them an outlet ball if they come under even greater pressure. The long ball for Walsh. The header down finds Thompson. Mills. Walsh wants it played in quickly, and he obliges, and Walsh's header. Calderwood gets it clear. Philpott, lovely control by him. Somerby just knocked him out of his stride, though. This will be another how it's up from Smith. No, it wasn't, because uh, before he could get there to take it, it was taken. Philpott. Agnew. Hoddle takes it from him, but it's only as far as Mills. And still Mills, and still... And he curls it beautifully over to the far post. Philpott turning it back in again. Walsh goes up to the keeper and it's in! It's 3-2! Incredible! The defender turned goal scorer gets goal number 16 of the season. They wouldn't give it up, Leicester. a genuine goal by Walsh, that's what is best at, but didn't Mills do well early on? For a brief second, Swindon seemed to stand still when the ball was played back in. That was the position there. I think that Swindon half looked to see if the referee that thought Joe Asian had blocked uh, the goalkeeper, Fraser Digby, there. But uh, Walsh did a genuine leap, and it's 3-2. I said at half-time, 3-2 the other way. Well, what a wonderful game of football this is. Here's Bowden. 
Moncur, taken away from him by Whitlow. Now Walsh, what a hero he's been, a part in both the goals, scored the second, of course, Whitlow drives forward now. He's got Joe Jim and looks for Thompson, and Thompson has equalised! It's unbelievable stuff now! You can't pause for breath. Steve Thompson can't finish once again taking the leaf out the huddle book and Maskell a placement finish terrific break by Whitlow clever ball back behind everyone and Thompson appears first Link can't get there great finish great gun here goes Maskell for Swindon Moncur Link beaten to it Excellent play by Leicester, they really are in the driving seat now. Thompson knocks it down the line for Joe Jim, and he'll keep going, you can bet your life on that. Six goals, marvellous football, great atmosphere, what an advertisement for the game this is. It's the type of game, Alan, where commentators are caught cold because they're trying to recollect each finish, and they've had six. There's the record, 20 minutes to go. It would be a brave man that would place a bet on the eventual winners now. Are you brave enough, David? Well, I think Leicester have got the power and they've got the strength. It's just whether now they can play sensibly, not commit too many forward. I think that Swindon, I've always said this, can run out of legs towards the end of the game. McLaren a little bit in midfield, struggles on recovery. Then Hoddle too, if there's a downside, it's that. And they've got an ageing side, an aging side uh, Swindon. I would expect Steve White to be on the field very soon. Agnew, under pressure from Mitchell. But Leicester have got their tails up now. They look quicker, they look stronger, they look more determined. They're in the hunt and they're playing some good football. And psychologically, and that's so important in football, obviously Leicester have the upper edge now. John Gorman's face betrays that. Steve White ready to come on. A 3-0 lead has been swept away. Well, there are many differing opinions about the playoffs. Personally, I think they're an absolutely wonderful idea. I thought that even before today, when you see a game of this quality, it just underlines what a boost they give to the end of the season. Here goes Agnew for Leicester City. It's a great run, and he turns it back towards Walsh, and it was tipped away by Digby before he could reach him. They look shell-shocked, Swindon. They don't know what's hit them. Monker. McLaren, Hoddle, Sonnady. That's a good ball, and Mitchell gets up well, but not quite well enough. Mills runs his own penalty area with the ball, that was brave. Leicester even get the throw in, everything's going their way at the moment. I was fortunate enough to see the league game at Leicester this season, which Leicester won 4-2. And uh, Swindon had to survive a hurricane the first 13 minutes. Leicester were 3-0 up. But Swindon kept calm on that day, kept working the ball, and in the end it finished 4-2 to Leicester. And at the moment, Swindon must keep calm. Whitlow. Field. He's done well, Oldfield. He's done very well. well. No one really read the cross. 
Ling. Hoddle. Under pressure from Walsh. Still finds some of the accurately. McLaren. Now Mastel. Foul by Smith. Swindon get the free kick. Swindon relieved just to get out of their half at the moment. It's incredible to think they went three goals up early on in the second half, but then three Leicester goals in the space of 12 minutes have brought the team's level. Hoddle's free kick, looking for Mitchell. In behind him was Taylor, and he's won the corner of Steve Walsh, defending as well as attacking with a bit of style. Sean Taylor must have felt that his goal would give the passport to the Premier League. It gave Swindon a 3-0 lead, but that lead no longer exists. 15 minutes to go. Taylor's up there again, but Walsh once more beats him. Ling. Back in it goes again towards Taylor, and that's good work by Kevin Poole. Bodies all around him, but he's got the ball. That was an important catch for Kevin Poole. That will do him good. Can I remind you at this stage that if the teams finish level after 90 minutes, we will have half an hour of extra time. And if they still can't be separated, the playoff final will go to penalties, as the third division one did here on Saturday. Bowden. Mitchell's gone down injured for Swindon inside the Leicester half, just out of the picture at the moment. As Whitlow goes forward and finds Walsh. Poor control by him though. Hoddle. Mitchell's still lying injured. He's on his feet now. Hoddle forward, looking for Maskell. But Poole has the ball safely at his feet. I think uh, if Mitchell's got any type of injury, which looks a muscle injury to me, I'm sure that will accelerate uh, the decision to send Steve White onto the field. That's a great header by Walsh to Oldfield, and Oldfield has Jochim in support, and it was an absolute life-saving tackle by Colin Calderwood, the Swindon captain. It really looked as though Leicester were going to score again then. Now Maskell. great tackle here David yeah it did terrific because it looked as though Joe Asian would be favorite if David Oldfield would have managed to squeeze that ball through been a very consistent performer at this level now for approximately four seasons it was a fine signing I believe it was under freedom of contract from Mansfield Town and Ian Greaves was the manager of all I have to turn away with Joe Chin Cutting down the space, now gets it back from Bowden. Difficult one for the keeper, this! And Agnew made sure it was even harder. Well, uh, they still take chances, they've just considered three goals and they still refuse at times to get that ball away from the danger area. We hear managers and coaches imploring defenders to get it into row X when they're in trouble. I'm sure they never suggest that at Swindon. Absolutely. But Leicester City too, a different brand of football, but equally admirable, their contribution today. And now there's going to be a substitution. Craig Maskell, Swindon's leading scorer, will be replaced by one of their veterans, Steve White, who played in the third division playoffs six years ago and also against Sunderland in 1990. Seven seasons at the club, 34 now, and he's on in the final 12 minutes. Well, just to think, it's the 1st of June tomorrow. At the end of such a long and hard season, these clubs have produced a display like this. It is a wonderful, wonderful credit to both sets of players that the match has been of such a high calibre.
Taylor. And also a credit to the league in general because there's been a lot of good football played this season. Televiewers have been fortunate enough to see plenty of it, but there's other good footballing sides who didn't quite make the top six. Teams like Grimsby and Millwall. Here comes Ling forward. That's a good effort. Brilliant save by Poole. He's kept deciding it with that save. That was on its way. Swindon's corner. Bowden knocks it up towards Collo and Taylor off the line. Walsh gets it away. No end to the excitement. Ling, Holderwood and Mitchell both going up for it, and he comes out to Taylor. And Leicester have survived the scary moment. And Whitlow brings it clear for that. Jochen couldn't control it. Swindon so close to a goal. It's been so good, you almost hope it goes to extra time, this. Ten minutes remaining. White. Taylor. He almost worked the oracle again then, Taylor, for Swindon. Calderwood. Bowden free on the left. On it goes for Mitchell, and Mitchell's in space here, and he's got White with him. Poole has produced another miraculous save. Three times in quick succession, Swindon almost snatched a goal. That was a delightful ball played over the top. Richard Smith's chasing, but he can't get there. And there you feel Mitchell's favourite. And Paul blocks, comes out late, but blocks, blocks cleanly, gathers the ball. Leicester a little bit annoyed with the follow-up there. Hopefully it's nothing serious. And of course, moments ago, David, Swindon almost scored uh, before that. Yeah, the corner of Bowden. There's that header. Good positional play, that, Phil Pott. That's what you've got people on the line for. If the goalkeeper's beaten, they've got to get that ball away. And Swindon appear to have weathered the storm, and it was a tremendous Leicester storm, tremendous battling qualities. To come back from 3 0 down, it's good to get one goal, it shows great willpower to get two. If you score three, it's outstanding. If they get a fourth, it will be truly brilliant. Well, to think that Swindon have been pulled back to 3 3 by Brian Little's team, and yet now, in the last few minutes, have had three opportunities to get another goal. Brian Little looks the calmest man in Wembley. Or does... <laughs> I think the final expression really betrayed his feelings. Eight minutes to go. I think this will go down as one of the Wembley classics. And it's not over. It has to be finished today. Thompson. A decent ball into Walsh. Taylor's clearance to Oldfield. Thompson. Dangerous ball. White cuts it out. Well won back though by Wicklow. Now Hill knocking it on. Taylor's had an outstanding game at centre half for Swindon. Moncare. Hom. Knocks it long for White, and White steals in and goes down, and it's a penalty. The referee has given a penalty for a foul on the substitute. Seven minutes to go. David, please. Well, there was once again an incredible pass, beautifully flighted. I do feel that Kevin Paul should be more alert to that ball played through, should be a little bit closer to the edge of his box there. Steve White nudged it past. It was definitely obstructed, but how many referees give obstruction an indirect free kick, an indirect free kick in that situation? It's a penalty, it's all or nothing. And Bowden, quite a sure shot, will have the opportunity here to put Swindon back in the driving seat.
a year ago. Leicester conceded a controversial penalty against Blackburn Rovers, which cost them a place in the Premier League. Is history about to repeat itself? Paul Bowden from the spot for Swindon. He scored! This game today, goals, 145 goals have scored between them in this year's division, and today, seven more goals. Unbelievable game this has been. Can Leicester dredge up their reserves of courage and tenacity once again, and still rescue this game in the last five minutes? It's not a bad ball in by Smith, Walsh goes in, but Digby gets there first. Like you, David, I must say I felt that the penalty was harsh. Some referees would have given it, most probably wouldn't. But Poole certainly took a big, big risk in that challenge. Here goes Monker. Oh, he skips past Mills' challenge. Couldn't get the cross in. Smith gets it clear. Walsh's header. One back by Ling. Now McLaren. Four minutes to go. Swindon lead Leicester 4-3. And Moncler's got away from his marker again. And lays it on for White. And now Bowden takes over. Looks for Mitchell. Some will be behind him on the far post. Mills momentarily has gone down with Kremp. The Leicester fullback is back on his feet now, but he's clearly uncomfortable. And Paul Bowden's 12th of the season, the fifth from the spot. Might, might, I'm not making this mistake anymore, might have given Swindon victory. But they've already lost a three-goal lead. They could easily lose a one-goal lead. Hill drives it on. Taylor gets it clear. Poor old Gary Mills can hardly jog, never mind run now, but he still finds the strength to cross a decent ball in. The danger is now that uh, Leicester will look for Walsh at every opportunity. He's asserted himself in this half in the air. He's been dangerous, and um, it's important that Leicester try and just be patient a little bit longer because... If they try and put that ball in from just anywhere and just kick it wildly into the box, it's going to be no good even for Walsh. Well, it's an old cliche, I know, but you feel that this is the type of match where you don't want either side to lose. Someone has to. At the moment, it looks like it's going to be Leicester. It's also the type of match, Alan, the second half particularly, where you don't really need a commentator. Thanks very much. <laughs> Here's Oldfield. Now Wicklow. No, oh, I know what you mean. It's been marvellous, marvellous entertainment. Some of these clearance knocked away. Leicester have got to hold on because Swindon are going to make another substitution. Nicky Hazard's coming on for the outstanding John Monker. Yeah, John has been outstanding. I had him at Tottenham as a younger player. Possibly, like many of them at Tottenham, stayed a couple of years too long but he's now beginning to come out of his shell, he's a nice footballer, and of course coming on is another in the Tottenham mould, Mickey Hazard, a very fine player who's suffered with injuries a lot during his career. And Mitchell has earned the free kick for Swindon. One and a half minutes remaining. Swindon, three years ago, won this equivalent match, thought they were promoted into the top division. The authorities said no. Can they put that history behind them as Ling tries a tremendous effort? And appropriately enough, he's chosen that moment to be named as the man of the match, Martin Ling. A 
I thought there were a few candidates myself. There's been many outstanding candidates. If Swindon are to retain the lead, there's only one man you can possibly give it to. But there again, that's a personal view. I'll ask you who it is in a moment. Anyway, here's Ling. White. Well played. Hazard. He sees a gap, but couldn't explode into it. Who are you referring to, David? Well, I think Glenn Hoddle's played wonderfully. He he managed to get them calm early on in the game. He played their passing game and slowly got on top, got that first goal before half-time, which was so crucial and has been so important in playing these clever balls through in the second half, too. He's, he's been marvellous. And uh, he is the anchor, he's the leader. He's got some more defending to do now as we move into stoppage time. Digby gets it clear. And as far as Philpott. Oh, and the cross flicked away, but behind for a goal kick. We are into stoppage time. Leicester City, who came back from three goals behind to draw level, are now 4-3 down. There's a foul on Mitchell, just what the doctor ordered for Swindon. Well, this famous old club from Wiltshire had a wonderful time here 24 years ago, their greatest day when they won the League Cup, beating Arsenal in the days of Don Rogers. But this will surely surpass even that moment if they can hold on to their one-goal lead now, deep into stoppage time. And they have a free kick. Hazard drills it in, away by Hill. Ling got that one all wrong. Some supporters will say he got it absolutely right. Yes. Deep to the corner flag. And Leicester have to just throw the ball forward as quickly as they can now. And Hazard made sure that Mills wasn't able to do that. Smith gets it away. Bowden goes in and wins it back. Then Ling to Taylor. On into the corner where they wanted it to be. We've had two minutes of stoppage time. Could this be Leicester's final assault? Somebody hooks it clear. They've got to get on with it now, Leicester City. Time is running out. Agnew. To Smith. Forward to Mills. Walsh is up there. Joe Chin goes down. No... Suggestion of a foul, though. It's all over! A Wembley Classic has ended with victory for Glenn Hoddle and a place in the Premier League for Swindon Town. You can only feel deeply, deeply sorry for Leicester City. For the second time in 12 months, they've tasted defeat. For the sixth time in their history, they've come to Wembley and they will go home losers. But Wembley is all about winners. The Leicester players are inconsolable, but Glenn Hoddle has led Swindon Town into the promised land. I think I can uh, spot the Chelsea chairman over on the far side. I, I have to hope for Glenn Hoddle, that whatever his uh, future is, that he continues to explore all the good things in the game. He's a marvellous player, he's been a wonderful leader today. And uh, one can't speak too highly of him. For Leicester, I do feel that uh, next season they're equipped for automatic promotion. Well, emotional scenes here, and we'll be back at Wembley right after the break. So remember, after a hard day, nothing will do for the boys but... Ah! Nothing will do for the boys, but 
that refreshing taste of a cold filter Coors Extra Gold. Cut! Are we still rolling? Don't worry, John. We'll dub it later. Hi, I'm the director. Would you like to see my camera? Sure. <laughs> You're witnessing a once-in-a-lifetime event. The birth of a car that takes motoring into a new era. The Citroen Xantia. With its unique road handling system, the Xantia offers levels of refinement and a degree of control and security you've never experienced before. The Citroen Xantia, the car to eclipse all others. Now, with every special twin pack of Agfa film, you get a free Happy Teddy. I'm on a hair and beauty course, so friends often ask me what's good for their hair. We all know that blow drying and styling is bad for our hair, but we still do it. Well, now I've learned that really healthy looking hair starts deep down. That's why I was asked to try new Pantene 2-in-1. Pantene combines shampoo and a conditioner with pro-vitamin complex. The pro-vitamins penetrate your hair to nourish it. Now my hair has never looked healthier. And it really shines. So when friends ask me what's good for their hair, I tell them to try new Pantene 2-in-1. Pantene, the daily treatment for healthy-looking hair. Hey, 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 hey! For a personal pan pizza, any weekday lunchtime from 1.99 in 10 minutes, or it's free, hit the hut. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Thunderbird are go. Go, Thunderbirds. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Thunderbirds, go! JJ wants his document in an hour. OK, I'll do it. Don't panic. What can I do? Early retirement? I've only got one pair of hands. Oh, ha. Go oh. on. Anita, emergency. Five charts to get your own tea bag. Donna! Rank Xerox laser printers are designed to be shared. Robust, fast and so reliable, each one is available with our total satisfaction guarantee. Is it all right? Donna, I'm speechless. Oh. That's nice. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Rank Xerox, the document company. For the first time in Swindon Town's history, they will be lining up against the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham and the other greats of English football. And this friendly little club from Wiltshire has finally buried the disappointment of three years ago when they rightly won promotion, beating Sunderland here in the play final only to find that irregularities meant that they were forbidden to take their place. Glenn Hoddle has put all that behind them. The question now, of course, in Swindon, is will he be there to lead them in the Premier League next season? Well, Glenn Hoddle, but, uh, will he be staying uh, with Swindon Town? Well, Gary Newborn asked him that right after the final whistle. Well, Glenn, 
you've got them into the Premier Division. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, we did it the hard way, didn't we? We didn't do it easy. 3 0 up and we let it slip. What a game it must have been for you lads on television. But to be fair to Leicester, I feel for them. It's the second time they've come here as losers. And you, you know, they've, they've battled away, they've come back from 3 0, but I'm absolutely elated for the lads. Will you fantastic. be in the Premier Division with them? I'm just going to go up that rule box. Might never get another chance. Yeah. Well, Jim's. Well, Glenn Hoyle um, done it. I only have one thing to say. We're going to have to play the cup final sometime in March. Get it out of the way because it's rubbish. Get these playoffs on because they are a different class to the cup final. We've seen a game here that has been second to none all season. Oh, it's been wonderful. I mean, Fabulous we... game of football. I thought actually when it got back to 3 3 less, I might have done it. Well, you'd have backed them, wouldn't you? You would have backed them, but to be fair, Swindon had three chances after that, didn't they? They did do. And you just have to say that this was one of the great games at Wembley and we've seen some rough stuff here lately, believe me, but this was a credit to both teams. Congratulations to Swindon Town, super effort by both sides, yeah. wonderful. I wouldn't like to have been bored and taken that last uh, penalty kick. Oh, I don't know, I might, have, I might have fancied it, especially as it went in. <laughs> yeah, you might have fancied it. OK, well, that is it from Wembley this afternoon. We have more top-class sport on ITV this coming Saturday with further coverage of the Bridge Lions Tour of New Zealand. That's at 10 past one, followed by the start of ITV's coverage of international athletics this summer, the Peril International from Portsmouth at 3 o'clock. Our next football is on Wednesday, June the 9th, England's first match in the US Cup against the USA in Boston. Live coverage at 10.40 p.m. Well, thanks for being with us this afternoon. We'll leave you with the news that Swindon are in the Premier League after a dramatic playoff here this afternoon. From us all at Wembley, bye-bye.